In this lesson, we're going to introduce you to cells. Let's get started. Here are our syllabus links. All right. We are in unit one, topic one, and there are some peers and text references to your right as well. Be really, really careful, making sure you read exactly what uh, syllabus content we are looking at and also importantly, what cognitive verb. Okay, so let's make a start. Cell theory is this, the idea that the cells are the most basic building block of all living organisms. They are the smallest unit of life, and the cell theory actually states that all living things are made up of cells. Cells arise from pre-existing cells, and also the activity of the organism is a sum of all the activities and the interactions of all those cells. Now, there's many, many versions of this cell theory around. Some have three points, some have four, some are very different. So be wary when you do some reading. What is in a cell? Now, cells do very specialized jobs. They can be default or they can be specialized, right? So like uh, stem cells are unspecialized cells. So here we've got some red blood cells. Here we've got some onion root tip cells. Here we've got some small intestine cells and here are some sperm cells. Now, obviously they do very, very different jobs. So depending on their job, they're going to have very different organelles um, inside them. So, you know, bits of machinery to do the job for them. Some basic cell requirements, regardless of the type of cell, however, okay, they absolutely need water. They need to have it present in their cytoplasm and their extracellular fluid on the outside of the cells in an entire organism. There needs to be oxygen. We need that to do cellular respiration to produce our energy. We uh, do need some carbon dioxide. Some cells do photosynthesize and therefore require that to make their energy. We need inorganic materials as well, uh, like nitrogens, phosphorus, iron, all those kinds of things. So like iron in hem um, hemoglobin carries oxygen and carbon dioxide around in red blood cells. We also need organic compounds like carbohydrates for the energy. We need uh, lipids, we need nucleic acids, all those kinds of things. We need a source of energy. Now, some cells can photosynthesize, make their own energy. Some actually require a chemical energy of some description. And our final one is the ability to remove wastes as well. Okay, we absolutely need to remove those wastes. They can build up and become toxic. All right, organelles. Now, in order for a cell to meet its base level requirements, it's going to need some machinery to do that. And organelles are indeed that. Okay, they are little organs. So there's an awful lot of these, like a lot. You would have learned some in year eight, but I'm going to speed through these. Please make sure you do some reading uh, to supplement any of this or have a look at your syllabus guide to make sure you know which ones are important. Right, cytoplasm and the cell membrane. The membrane obviously decides what's coming in, what's going out, in what quantities and when. The cytoplasm is that liquid inside the cell where other organelles are suspended um, and, and many nutrients are also dissolved in this. So think uh, the water balloon filled with hair gel. All right. Nucleus has a variable location. It contains all the genetic information. It's surrounded by its own version of a membrane and it regulates the activity of the cells. It's very easy to see when you look down a microscope. The mitochondria is our favorite. It is the powerhouse of the cell. It is involved in cellular respiration. It produces ATP, which is our energy currency in the cell. And it is abundant. They, these are abundant in cell types like muscles where they need a lot of energy. The endoplasmic reticulum, it's kind of a continuation of the membrane that um, circumnavigates or, you know, surrounds the, the nucleus. Um, and what it does is it synthesizes proteins. Okay, the ribosomes that are attached, another little organelle, um, produce proteins, which is an organic molecule. And they, the endoplasmic reticulum can fold, modify and transport these proteins around the cell where they're needed. The ribosomes are little protein workbenches, essentially. Ribosomes themselves make the proteins, but they are themselves proteins. It's proteinception, okay? They don't have a membrane, um, and we will look into how proteins are made later on in the course. They can be floating around free in the cytoplasm, or they can be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi body uh, participates in this idea of packaging up proteins as well. So they all work together, uh, and they're secreted in vesicles, and it works very closely with that endoplasmic reticulum. Chloroplasts we've seen before, they are often bright green, they contain chlorophyll, which is a light trapping pigment, and they are plant cell specific, right? So photosynthesis is occurring here. Lysosomes are animal cell specific and they are fluid filled sacs and what they do is they release enzymes. Now some of these can digest or recycle molecules in the cell. Sometimes they can actually trigger controlled cell death. So in this particular case, you've got um, the, the tail of the frog disappearing because it's no longer required, you know, when it's uh, moving from a tadpole to be a full time frog. 
Vacuoles are closed compartments. They are filled with water. Uh, they are very large and quite prominent in plant and fungi. They do appear in some animal uh, and bacteria cells and things like that. They can uh, isolate toxins. They can store waste. They can uh, store sugars and, and energy. They can help maintain pressure, shape of the cell as well, and they can just generally maintain the internal environment. Centrioles. These are used to pull apart the genetic material during mitosis, and you can see them very clearly in some mitosis cells there. And cell walls are planned in, uh, found in plant cells, excuse me, algae, fungi, some prokaryotes, and they lie outside the cell membrane. Okay, They protect, support, and maintain the shape of the cells. Uh, plant cells can be quite rigid, which is a good thing, um, and they also prevent excess water uptake or loss. So this is a giant table from Pearson. It is table 2.5.2, and I want you to have a read of it, but also check your syllabus dot points to make sure that these are the most important organelles uh, to focus on.